Welcome to episode 100, each and every one of you. I am so excited to bring this episode to you. Thank you so much for getting this far and being with us for all of the story that we've done so far. So we have a special treat for you tonight. So I want you to sit back and relax and enjoy the next three parts as we dive into episode 100 here. Now, got to set the stage a little bit. So as I said, lean back, take a sip of your drink. Well, not if you're driving to work, but if you're listening along with us right now, here's to you and let's get into it. So for tonight's session, I want to take us into the shadow plane where we'll focus on a new cast of characters at the center of which are twin Kyals, Teneval and Trelax Adar. Kyals descended from humans who became trapped in the shadow plane millennia ago, where in the realm of darkness they evolved into a unique species altogether. Teneval and Trelax were born and raised in a Kyal enclave in Kuvakara on Shadow Verses, led by a governess named Vela, a pragmatic Kyal known to do anything necessary for the survival of her community. About a year ago, there was a rift that divided the Kyals of Shadow Verses and thrust them into an increasingly hostile standoff due to the interference of Eclipse Innovations offering power and technology to the Kyals. Vela did not trust Eclipse Innovations and told Eclipse Innovations that they could keep their promises, that the Kyals had not needed them before and would not need them now. Unfortunately, some dissenters in the Enclave acted swiftly in a cabal against Vela, greedily accepting the newfound power and promises from a new Shadow Queen. This forced Vela and those loyal to her, including the twins, into an extreme defense. They formed a resistance against the aptly named Eclipsed, beginning with shoring up the defenses of the Enclave's stronghold in Kuvakara. Three months after the split in the Enclave, Teneval held counsel with Vela to present a bold new plan. Teneval and her brother would go to Shadow Sky Dock and join the worshippers of Zonkuthan in control there, who were known for their diplomacy, but also having a deep connection to the Midnight Lord. Teneval hoped that Father Gloom, the congregation's leader, would join them against the Eclipse and oust this pretender, the mysterious Shadow Queen. Their uncle, Maladus Amev, who was from another enclave of Verses, was already working there as a mechanic so perhaps he could help them gain favor with the Kuthites. To their surprise, the twins were graciously accepted among the Kuthites. For Teneval, it felt so right that she became a disciple of Zonkuthan herself. They were assigned a salvage ship by one of Father Gloom's top acolytes, a Kyal named Hirambor. Hirambor was in charge of converting a type of malleable energy known as Shadow Stuff into starships the main commodity that secured Father Gloom's hold over Shadow Verses. Herenbor discovered a way to convert excess shadow energy into tangible material by salvaging it from the runoff that seemed to occur where the space between planes was thin. While the Sky Dock had significant amount of this excess shadow stuff, it was not enough to sustain their needs, so the twins began working as a part of a salvage crew to find other thinnies across the shadow plane and harvest this energy. Although they found satisfying work here, Trelax had not forgotten the reason they came to Shadow Skydock in the first place, to obtain the Kuthites' aid in their fight against the Eclipsed. But every time Trelax mentioned something to Teneval, she brushed him off saying that they needed to commit further to the ways of Zonkuthan before asking this congregation to put their lives on the line for them. During her time among the Kuthites, Teneval began having intense dreams. In these dreams, there was always a woman leading the Kuthites against the Eclipse, the true herald of Zonkuthan, destined to become a goddess herself. Teneval had only told her brother about these dreams, hesitant to fully trust her uncle. At first, Trelax convinced her that these were only manifestations of her newfound devotion to Zonkuthan, that she was seeing herself in her dreams of grandeur. Yet, a couple weeks ago, the dream changed. Zonkuthan himself spoke to Teneval and Trelax, the only time he had shared a dream with his twin sister, and the message was clear. Zonkuthan had chosen them to seek out this herald and make sure that she came to the path 
of the Velstrak. The somber mission delivered to both, Zonkuthan disappeared, leaving them stunned. They had no idea who this herald was, how to find her, or where to start. All they had were the pieces of Teneval's dreams, so they reached out to a dream prophet named Mordrin Dovi that lived in Shadow Verses. The dream prophet was reluctant at first, but after mind-linking with Teneval, he immediately agreed to aid. They spent two days with the dream prophet undergoing intense dream therapy prodding until finally Mordrin had a breakthrough. A vision of a remote asteroid research station that had just appeared in the shadow plane. Though he didn't know what, Mordrin was convinced that the station held the key to turning Teneval's dreams into communications with the Herald. While truthfully, Mordrin had little concern about Zonkuthan in this Herald or the plight of the Kyals, the opportunity to fully research dreams at this level was too tempting of a treasure to ignore. This lab also happened to have a pretty large pocket of shadow stuff, so, acting as if this were any other salvage mission, save for their uncle Maladus insisting that he and his gloombot accompany them for safety, they loaded up their starship on a trip towards destiny. So please enjoy episode 100, What Dreams They Come. We're here, episode 100. It's 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 happening. Uh, I've only thrown up six times today, so I consider that a chi- an achievement. Yeah, that's Ricky a win. numbers, dude. You gotta pump yeah. those numbers up. <laughs> Did you drink some fluids at least? I mean, I am drinking fluids. whiskey today. Oh, oh that's there we go. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what I forgot before we hit record. That's mm. fine. Oh well. well, Josh, go make your drink. I'll talk to everybody else, and you can come back, and we'll we'll do a toast. Today can I tell on- you what I'm drinking? <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, but you can tell me. Oh, okay. Well, then I go. Cool. Um, so this is a Southern Prohibition. This is Berserker Mode. It's a Baltic mm. Porter with coffee and cocoa nibs. I'm sorry. That one is r- really good. Um, I must encourage all of you to pace yourselves as we have quite a long episode. Says the bold drinking whiskey GM. <laughs> not exactly. in a bowl. <gasps> Kind of a bowl, maybe. It's a bowl. It's just a high bowl. That's what that is. <laughs> but it's only half a shot of whiskey in Aren't there. Aren't all cups really just high just, bowls? Just, just right. That's, what, that's <laughs> what I've been trying to say this whole time. That's what, Living the high bowl life. It. Yep. <laughs> On today's gripping episode of The Hundalorian, <laughs> high bowls. <What>? High bowls. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, guys, we've been uh, been preparing for this for a few weeks some of you for me a few months um i'm excited to to get into it uh um i just want to say thank you to each of you for being part of this journey it's been amazing and i i I did not think that when we started this that this was what was uh episode 100 was going to look like um but you know that's that's life after COVID, I guess. I've had ex- <laughs> a lot of extra time on my hands to come up with some crazy shit. So, <laughs> life so during plague times, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you did there, Zach. Um, well, how how are you guys doing? I'm just gonna stall, stall, stall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm currently mixing a drink, so I'm great. What did you end up getting there? Uh, bullet and coke. Bullet and Coke. I love me some Bullet. Yep. I brought the whole bottle with me, so... Uh, <laughs> just All right, Josh. He said, pace we'll see you, my guy. Oh, I, will. <laughs> I will. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, 
Look, we we do have a lot to cover. So, I mean, honestly, I, I'm just ready to get into it. What about y'all? Let's go. We're Let's waiting on you, chicken. man. I don't Come know on. what. Yeah, I've got an appointment. I've got to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> I've got yeah. Cyberpunk to go play. No, so, I was, uh, was going to say the same thing. I'm just going to get out of here and play some Cyberpunk. <laughs> well, that's what episode 100 is. It's actually a pivot to us <laughs> podcasting our various cyberpunk experiences. Mm-hmm. Now we're not oh. doing a visual no. stream of it. Oh, we're, oh, yeah. gonna like we're gonna start using the Cyberpunk twenty twenty system. I was like right. oh, I was okay. thinking we were gonna do like Cyberpunk Red or something. That'd be cool mm. sometime. Mm. No, we're gonna Sorry do to a podcast you. about playing video games. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna listen to each other. How play absurd video games. would that be? Doing a podcast about playing games. I know. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> It'll never I pity make anybody it. who who tries to do that project. Um Well, let's get going. Episode 100, part one. Here we go. The scene opens in a cabin aboard a starship. We see three figures in the room, a gray-skinned female lying prone on her bunk, while two other gray-skinned men watch over her. One of the men watches with worry in his yellow eyes, while the other, a bald mustachioed man, sits with a hand gently resting on the woman's forehead. The beautiful woman stirs but does not awaken, and the bald man pulls his hand away in frustration. He stands as his dark blue robes cascade down his figure, and he turns to the other man in the room. We can see now that the woman on the bed and the man with the white long hair and yellow eyes are undoubtedly twins, stark beauty mirrored in each other's visages. The brother turns to the dream prophet with concern and anger and says, What? What is it, Prophet? You are supposed to be able to help us make sense of this. I am trying, but dreams, they're like ripples in a river. You can see them until you try to hold them. I tire of your riddles, old man. Remind me again why we are paying you when it seems all you have done is fill my sister's head with delusions and false hopes. You have such little faith, Trelax. I suppose there is no surprise there, a man of your stifled comprehension. Trelax raises his armored fist as his moat begins to crackle, but then, seeming to calm himself, he scoffs and exits the cabin. (sighs) The dream prophet smirks as Trelax leaves and turns back to the Kyle woman, still asleep, muttering the same words she always did. I must find her... Must find her. The Svartalfar prophet shakes his head and makes a few notes on his data pad and turns to look through one of his dream interpretation books when the Kyle finally awakes and says, Mordren, did you see anything? Where is Trelax? He went to exercise his demons, Tenaval. He's, he's fine. He contracted a headache from trying to think too hard, I believe. Brother Mordren, you should really cease your teasing of Trelix. He cares deeply, and I fear he may one day wrap that shadowy blade chain of his around your neck and bear his point in your brain. And we can't have that, can we? At least, not until you've helped us find the Herald. Mordren's smirk quickly disappears from his face. His poor attempts at wit usually found him in trouble in social situations, and he knew that these siblings would lead them, lead him to his greatest discovery. He didn't know how they would, and that frustrated him as much as it did them, but he couldn't let on that they knew nearly as much as he did when it came to these prophetic night visions. Just wait, my dear. When we arrive at this asteroid, you will see that my guidance has much value. I assure you that there is something there that will guide us to the next stage of your dream journey. Yes, but what are we even looking for, Mordren? Mordren opens his mouth to respond, but at that moment, a voice sounds over the ship intercoms. Hey, kiddos. We got a ping on something approaching fast from behind us. May want to come up here and check it out. Should be arriving in our full scanner range in about ten minutes. The Gloombot is already at a station, but he's kind of creeping me out. He looks ready to pull the trigger on this pea shooter. Uh, ten of all, Mordrew. Welcome to episode 100. Emily, would you like to tell us a little bit about what ten of all looks like? 
Sure. Um, so you, as you said, she is a uh, ka- uh, Kyle, and mm-hmm. so she has very kind of slight grayish, whitish skin um, and glowing yellow eyes. Um, she and her brother both have sort of stark white hair. And but she, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, Zach, but she has scars, whereas her brother does not. All, all, all along her face and mm-hmm. arms and pretty much every area of skin that is visible. Uh, there's kind of ritualistic looking scarification that's taking place. Um, she's a she's a pretty pretty barb kind of she's a little prickly I guess you could say visually <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, what about Mordrin tell us a little bit about Mordrin Heath yeah um, Mordrin is what's called a Svartalfar which uh, it's kind of like a drow um, mm-hmm. pr- pretty similar appearance wise to a drow he's a uh, bald uh, he is mustachioed, but he also has the like goatee uh, mm-hmm. for uh, extra sinister points. <laughs> um, he wears like flowing, uh, like midnight blue and purplish tinged robes. Uh, very, very, you know, mystical looking fella. Mm-hmm. Uh, like almost pitch black eyes. Um, Interesting. Yeah, he's something to behold. Um. So the two of you heard this announcement from uh, Teneval, that's your uncle, that just sounded out over the intercoms. Um, what do y'all do, the two of you? Well, uh, h- how are you feeling, Teneval? Are you, you all right? I'm fine. Just a little... Disappointed, I suppose. I, I keep. I feel like we are very close, but it is not close enough. That's. I, I, I know this frustration all too well in my line of work, but you must keep the faith and remember that the the realms of dream and the plane of shadow are inextricably linked. We will find what we're searching for. She kind of like would grin a little lopsided up at you as she sort of scoots off the cot. And, um, uh, let us go see what my uncle is on about. Oh, yes, lead the way. She head out. Uh, yeah, so the, the two of you make your way towards the bridge. Um, Trelax, I imagine that when you heard that over the intercoms, you probably also made your way towards the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, for All right, sure. so the the two of you, Teneval and Mordrin, you walk into the bridge and you see three um, three people here. You see Trelax, which is the twin of Teneval, and you see your uncle. Um, Zach, first tell me what Trelax looks like. Uh, Trelax is also a Kyle, uh, much like his sister. He has gray skin, glowing yellow eyes, and long, straight, stark white hair that goes down midway down his back Mm -hmm. uh he wears like a like a a tight fitting uh d suit like a space suit it's like all black with um metallic gauntleted arms and and boots nice um next to trailax is a uh a man by the name of maladus is that correct john yes what does uh what does maladus look like so, uh, Maladus is obviously a Kyle as well, uh, being Teneval and Trelax's uncle. Uh, he has uh, all the same characteristics of grayish ashen skin. Uh, he's got white hair and golden luminescent eyes. Uh, he looks worn, a little haggardly. Like he's approaching old age, but he want I mean, but he's not quite there yet. You know, he's still got energy. You know, he's just like older dad phase, so to speak. <laughs> um, but he wants to protect his nephew and niece. I mean, his armor, it looks secondhand. Um, he looks kind of like he's a little, a little 
out of place. I mean, he's much more a person who's fixed ships, but not a lot of, like, soldiering days. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of soldier, there is an intimidating-looking figure next to you um, in the shape of an SRO. Is that correct, Josh? Yes, it's a sentient robotic organism. Okay, well, tell me a little bit about your sentient robotic organism. Okay, so he's not like an android in the sense that he's not doesn't doesn't really have the fleshy bits. Uh, he's just mm -hmm. a robot that has uh, you know an AI that I guess uh, drew a soul to it because it was that lifelike. So it's mm -hmm. a, a living organism, but uh, all machine, and he is kind of a I don't know, kind of an imposing figure in that he's he lives up to his name of Gloombot. Um, Loombot. Yeah. He, he's he's kind of a, a tin color with a, a patina in between the joints and is has most of himself wrapped in like dark cloth and dark leather strips and strap like pieces. Um, he's hooded, but the hood is adorned with spikes from something that he probably has killed. Mm. Uh, same thing with his boots, uh, his left arm. Um, he's he's pretty decked out and it's, has a single glowing red eye coming out from underneath the hood. Well, very interesting. So these are all of our of our characters here. Um, I will say that to get our timeline straight, that this is happening about six months ago, and as Maldis reported over the intercom. Um, there's something approaching your ship from behind. Um, you're not far from your destination. Um, this ship that you're on is a scavenging or salvage ship. Um, Maladis, you are kind of the most probably experienced with this type of mission, though having this many people aboard is is new um and why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that that you do so maladis is actually a, he pretty much makes sure that the that the ship is in ship shape um he's decided to go on this mission uh in a way to uh Make sure that uh, his nephew and niece are at least protected. He he wants to make sure that he wasn't just sitting by uh, when they went out and made. I mean, took a risk. You know that he didn't. He didn't want them. I mean, he didn't want to not be there while they took a, uh, a risk and coming out here. All right, and so. We'll maybe get to that in a little bit, but let's deal with what's going on right now as that there is something approaching on the radar. Yeah, so right now he's, uh, he's looking at the terminals. He's you know checking the radar right now, and he, uh, I think what he would want to do is uh, kind of look to the group and just uh, decide whether or not or if we're going to uh, open – Hails, or if we are going to uh, uh, try to either outrun them or maybe hide. Can you say there were weapons on here? So this ship, um, as I said, its main function is to salvage shadow stuff. It's a salvage ship. Um, it does have a gyro laser and a light torpedo launcher in its forward arc. So, uh, so yeah, Gloombot is uh, sitting there, like finger twitching, like just kind of vibrating on the trigger, uh, and and just a little bit of shudder as he's clearly looking forward to this, hoping that he gets let, like that they let him pull the trigger. Does somebody want to try to run a scan as they get close enough to your sensor? I'll tell you what, I will. All right, well, let's get that computers. Okay. Okay, that's going to be a 17. Okay, 17. You can tell that whatever's approaching, there's multiples. There's like at least four approaching your rear. And that they're all tiny craft, whatever they are. 
they're they're very small and they're moving very fast and that there is doesn't seem to be any life on board somebody can roll an engineering check not tuna <laughs> yeah yeah, not uh, not crit yeah, lax I, either. I, can, right? I, I don't do even that have too. engineering. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can. I've only got a plus six too, though. It's better than a two. Yeah. Aid. Yeah. Yeah. Let me roll to aid. Yeah. Go ahead and aid. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a twenty-five to aid. So. There you oh, go. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. All right, and that is uh sixteen. So that's gonna be plus two. That's gonna be an eighteen. Uh, yeah. I mean. Gloombot probably says something to you about that it seems strange that starships of this size being out here this far kind of out in in space like they shouldn't be able to travel that far alone Um, so there might be something more but then like as you're having this conversation all the your defense alarms go go up and the ship uh, lights up with red like warning signs and alarms and uh, I'm going to take you to a little starship map oh shit four small little like drone like starships appear behind you and they're just zooming towards you all right, so, so we're going to do a little bit of starship combat to start this out. I mean, here we go. You have four... As is tradition. <laughs> As is As tradition. Is tradition. Um, so what I want you to do is start with our engineering phase. Um, John, does Maladis want to do anything? Okay, yes. So Maladis is uh, going to mess with the, um, the terminal. And he's going to go ahead and uh, divert uh, power, auxiliary power, to uh, one of the starship systems. Which one? So I want to go ahead and uh, give it uh, to Gloombot, just because he looks like That's he's... That's not how this works. So you give it to... Uh, like, if you're giving it to a system, what system are you giving it to? Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, boost uh, engines. Engines. Yes. All right. So that means that's going to be a speed boost for our pilot. That's Let's right. go ahead and get into the pilot initiative. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, as the magic officer, Mordrin acts in the engineering phase as well. And uh, he will attempt a precognition mm-hmm. to give the pilot a plus two on their piloting check. What is our ship's tier? It is a tier three ship. Okay, so one and a half times the tier ship plus ten is my DC. So fourteen. Is that right? Yeah, fourteen. It's tight. <laughs> All right. All right. So you succeed on that. So that's going to give you even more boost there, uh, pilot, on your helm phase. So. Let's get those piloting so, initiative checks. So what all bonuses am I getting on the helm phase so you get initiative a plus, roll? You get a plus two to your roll, and then you're going to get two extra hexes of movement. Yep. Okay. All right. So helm phase initiative. That's a natural one. Oh, oh no. no. Uh, starting it off strong. That's uh, It's a 15 plus whatever bonuses. Plus two. 17. It's all good, Zach. Yeah, just get him yeah. out of the way, man. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, then that means that these drones are going to go second, and so you can go first. Yeah, so as Trelax is you know, taking a seat at the pilot's chair, he's just... Can Captain act? Sure can. Um, she would see that Trelax is kind of not in, head in the game or whatever. This and is a salvage <laughs> ship. It is not for fighting. We'll <laughs> see if you can salvage this situation. And she will uh, uh, demand uh, uh, uh. him. Okay. Uh, an 18 on the die plus a 19. 
Yeah, that's going to get it. Okay. We don't even have to do the math. Yay, thank that thank God. So, uh, <laughs> so that's going to give him, what, a plus four boost? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. So this, this will be a, yep. to this piloting check, whatever so, stunt So, yeah, Trey Lights will attempt an evasive maneuver. Okay. Um, okay, that's a, for, for space rolls, it's a 27. Uh, All right. But, which, uh, without even any of the bonuses, I'm pretty sure that gets it. It does. Um, this is a slow ship, so with your bonus, you're going to actually get to go eight hexes. So it normally moves six. Uh, but you'll get to go eight because of the boost and... You're obviously successful in your evade, which is going to give you a boost to your... AC and TL. Yeah, that's it. All right, so you can move eight hexes in whatever direction. We you only want. have weapons in the forward arc. What's the range in those weapons? Uh, the torpedo is medium, and the gyro lasers is short. Now, that gyro laser can shoot port and starboard as well, though. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Trailax will just gun it. And just try to run as far as he can. Hopefully we can get out of range. He says, Trelax, where are you going? As I far want... from here as possible, D. I want to and, shoot uh, so how, how many? How far? How far can I go with the boost? Eight hexes. All right, eight hexes it is. Straightforward. Space north. Okay. A, a commendable action, Mr. Trelax. A detestable one. <laughs> You're more than welcome to pilot this yourself. I might just go outside and shoot at them from the uh, from the surface of the ship. I don't like <laughs> <I've>, this. <laughs> this oh, this fucking guy. Uh, so these guys have sixteen hexes of movement, perfect maneuverability. Oh my god! And they're all going to fly in directly behind you. Fucking tiny att- ships. Yeah, and actually attempt to bore into your rear. As we go to the gunnery phase. Now, Buy us a I, dinner first. Damn. <laughs> For real? <laughs> I don't uh, consent to this. Um, so you guys can't take a shot, correct? Mm-hmm. A gyro laser should be able to shoot either no, the port or the starboard ones. Oh, I guess there's two that are technically in your port. One's in your port and one's in your starboard. So you can get shots off on those. At a minus two. At a minus two, yeah. yep. Because <laughs> at least I get to shoot something. <laughs> uh, it's a twelve on the die plus what piloting? Uh, yes. Um, so yeah, so plus eight. All right, so that'd be an eighteen after that minus two from shooting to the side with the gyro laser. Um, that is a hit. That is what one d eight, I believe. Mm-hmm. So that is two damage. <laughs> Crushed it. Got, Rude. Got it. Rude. Um, so they actually ram into the back of your ship. Um, and each of them are going to just smash into the, your hull, doing 3d10 damage each. Holy Ooh. crap. Whoa. Yeah. These are okay. tiny ships. All right. Could... Well, <laughs> this mission's over before it ever started. I mean, basically. Yeah. So that's... Okay. The first one will hit. The second one misses. And the third one hits. The fourth one can't really get where it wants to, so it's not going to be able to do it. So that's 20 from the first one and 12 from the second one. So that's 32 total damage to your aft. <laughs> Let me do some math real quick. Okay, so we had 17 shields, so 32 minus 17. Be 15 damage makes it through to the hull. Which is going to do a critical. Yeah. Which is going to be a critical, and that's going to be on your engines. <gasps> we oh, no. are dead. We're not doing <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. This is over with before it started. Uh, mm mm-hmm. I blame you, Mr. Trelax. Just remember that. <laughs> I take no responsibility. This, again, is not a combat ship. We are on a salvage mission. 
Um, all right. And so, however, good news is the two that hit you destroyed themselves in in that attack. Oh, good. So they just <laughs> just kamikaze themselves right into the back of your ship. Uh, but there are still two remaining. And uh, <laughs> Morgan, and we'll... Morgan turns to Gloombot. Good shooting, Mr. Gloombot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we're back to the top here in the engineering phase. So Maladus at this point is, is just fretting over the ship. He's just like, oh, God, this is this is terrible. We need, we need to we need to get out of here. This is barely shipworthy. And he's going to, as a mechanic or as a uh, engineer, he's going to try. He's going to say, OK, we need to hold it together. And he's going to try to hold the system together by uh, patching and modifying. So this is going to be an engineering check. Okay. And I'm going to try to repair the crit, uh, the critical damage, or rather the, uh, what's it called? The uh, critical condition. Yep. 24. 24 is a success. Fantastic. And yes, yeah, so that should... Take it from what? What condition is it currently in? This this system that glitching. Yeah, I want to go ahead and uh, repair that um, right. to working order. All right, and Mordrin puts his hands to his temples and closes his eyes and tries to divine the future actions of these ships with another precognition to give and, and like tries to impart that energy onto Trelax. Okay, and that is definitely definitely a success. Uh, I can almost not fail this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So to the helm phase. Okay. Captain, she's going to look at Trelux and just say, you know, oh, you did well earlier. Keep it up. Uh, 12 on the die. That's going to be 25, 24. Success. Okay. So that's a plus two, two. bonus. Mm-hmm. To the Helm Phase Initiative? Well, you... you it's your choice, Emily. What, which one you want to... Uh, he got the initiative. Um, Mordren gave him that, so this will go to the overall piloting check. To the check. stunt. Yeah, gotcha. stunt. Yeah. Okay. Right, so it's a plus two to both your piloting rolls. Let's start with your Helm Phase, Helm phase Initiative. With my current bonuses, I rolled an 18. What are the additional bonuses? Plus two. So 20. So 20. Yeah. Uh, all right, I beat you. Um, so you move first. Okay. Uh, Trailer is just going to continue to try to evade. He's just going right. to keep running. You have a plus two on this as well. Okay, great. Do we have any computers on this ship? Mm. <laughs> what I is mean, a computer? <laughs> what is a computer? <laughs> you got a gloom bot. 20, a 25 total for the evasive maneuver. That is a success, so that boosts your AC. Okay. Uh, uh, and then you can move. Uh, you can only move six hexes this time because you're right. not boosted. Yep. Yeah, so Trail X just keeps moving. I do not think that we can outrun them. And so the two move up right behind you. And we're going to move to the gunnery phase now. Um, there is one on your, I guess, was at the port side. Mm-hmm. So I'll... Uh, uh, Gloombot's going to shoot at it. I don't think I got it with a 13 to hit. That is not going to hit uh, as your shot goes wide. And their shots, we have a hit and a natural 20. Why are they so small? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, man. <laughs> I like it. Thanks. All right. I've, so th- I've looked into the future, and that is, in fact, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be 25 damage on the first one, and 22 damage on the second one. So that's a total of 47 damage. Uh, you're going to go ahead and automatically take a critical hit to the engine because of the crit hit. So. It's going to bring it back down to glitching, and then that's probably going to burn through. You, hang on, you said 47 damage to the aft? Uh, well, I'm sorry, the 
Half of that's to your port. Okay. 25 to the port. All right, so that's eight damage to the hull from that. And then 22 to the aft. That puts us at negative HP, dude. It rips a hole in the engine compartment, engine bay of your ship. But they both explode when they do this, leaving you just kind of drifting now in space. Now you can, like, you have enough momentum to move towards your target, but your ship is in, in bad shape. Your engine is destroyed. Um, but the, the drones are gone. <laughs> Not a good situation here for you guys right off the bat as you're now drifting towards the asteroid that is your destination. You getting all sorts of alarm systems on your readouts saying that you know your engine's destroyed it's sealed off that bay you know pressurize it so the rest of the ship you know your life support systems and everything else are still okay but all your propulsion is is fucked um, and so you're really only operating on like backup thrusters you know just like little air air jets that can you know slows you way down you have enough control to probably land on the asteroid uh, but what you're going to do from there, you don't really know. Well, it would appear that we are fucked, as they say. It's all a part of the plan. <laughs> you say fucked. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> well, at least one of us is. Okay, relax. Look, let me go ahead and look at the systems here and we'll get a better idea on where on our current state so give me a minute uncle i appreciate your optimism however the situation is quite dire you don't have to tell me that i know the assistance better than you do you just need to calm down and just look over your sister and he's just going to go ahead and walk out and start looking over. He's going to turn off... First, he's going to turn off these systems. I mean, the, uh, the alerts. And he's going to start trying to repair. There is a giant hole in the hull of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just, he's just muttering to himself as he, as he leaves. Trillix so. puts on his helmet and, and, and activates his environmental protections because... Uh, yeah, there's a giant hole in the fucking ship. I mean, we've yeah. still got envir- or, uh, life support running. Yeah, right? yeah, we still have mm-hmm. life support systems. I mean, so when the hole ruptured, you know, it like all the airlocks to the engine room sealed and, and pressurized the rest of the, the ship. Uh, but and Our power core is fine, too, right? So we, yeah. can, we can just drift like this for as long as we have food or as long as well, the I mean, rest of the party has food. Well, Loomba would be fine. Well, that, and I mean, as I said, the asteroid is starting to come into your field of vision. Um, the It might be difficult to, to try to get into the engine room right this second, John, just because I okay. mean, you're, you are still floating in space. I think the, probably the focus here for the party would be to try to, to land the ship and get it stabilized. Um, because it just took a huge beating. I want everybody who can to roll either a computers or an engineering, whichever you're better at. All right. Okay. Lol, neither. <laughs> That's a bad roll. Got a nine on engineering. I got an 11. Yeah. <laughs> on computers. <laughs> I got a 26 on engineering. Uh, all right, so on the engineering, after after experiencing this, you know that these were had to have been like a drone attack from a larger ship somewhere behind you. You're not getting any kind of readings on any scans you do, but not only is your ship fucked, but there's something else out there who did a specifically targeted attack, it seems, on your engines. Like, these things seemed determined to bore into the ship to get to the engine room as you get closer to the asteroid uh, I need a piloting check from 
Trailax, I guess, to try to line the uh, land this thing sure. using backup systems here. You know, twenty four. 24 all right so you it's kind of a bumpy landing you know you just have these like little psh, 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 like just trying to get it just right and <laughs> the thing lands but you're you're able to land it without doing any more significant damage to the hull of the ship and uh i'll put you guys on a new map Ooh. um you land on this asteroid and you see that there's a large building facility and it's surrounded by a bunch of communications dishes and satellite dishes. Um, it looks as if n- no, like it feels eerily abandoned almost. You know, there, there's no activity, there's no flashing lights, like there's no power anywhere. You know, it's just this facility. All right, look, we're we're we're. Fine, we're a little bit fucked, but we did make it here. It's this is what we were trying to do. So everyone, be careful. Look out for each other because it would be a shame to get through that kerfuffle and then, you know, fall into a pit and break your leg or something like that. So, um, but yeah, we're 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 here, and and all of my intuitions and study into the nature of. Miss Tenevall's dreams strongly tell me that we we will find something here to continue our journey. What will we find? So, I'm a dream prophet. We kind of operate on vagaries. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of our bit. Oh. (laughs) And yeah, with that, you're, you're on this dark gray asteroid with all these communication towers and satellites covered in in dust and so John you said um, old Unky Maladis is going to try to repair the ship old Unky Mally yeah yeah that's right, what so you're going hate you're it gonna, I hate it <laughs> you're going to stay behind and, and try to try to do what you can to to patch together the ship huh yes all right well that leaves the four of y'all then um, that's Trelax, Mordrin, Gloombot 13, and Teneval. And you see that there is a main entrance kind of directly in front of you right here that seems to enter into this facility. All right, well, Trelax will take point. He'll just march up and just kind of like muttering curses underneath his breath to himself as he does, um, feeling a, a little disheartened about the mission. All right, so on the door, you see the words etched, Eclipse Innovations, which makes probably the, mm-hmm. the hair on Trelax's and Teneval's neck stand up. And under that, you see Drift, drift Technology Research. Hmm. Eclipse uh-huh. Innovation, Tenna, do you see this? Uh, yes, I see it very well. If anyth- if nothing else, well, I suppose your prophecy was correct in some ways. And she would kind of look over her shoulder to uh, Mordrin. And as she kind of does that, she would whip out a long barbed chain and slash it across the face of the sign and mar the eclipse innovations yeah I mean you you do that and it just like slashes right across the inscription and actually the uh, the little panel or the plaque clatters to the ground um, at your feet a little dust cloud as it hits the ground Hmm. roll for initiative (laughs) <laughs> right. As I, as I said that, I was like, shit, I'm going to make a lot of noise. Oh, well. Um. Well, Trelax gets ready to open the door, but before he does, he seizes his solar moat, and it forms into a, a also a chain, but it is a dark, bluish, shadowy energy chain with a small hand scythe, like a kurisagama or... Um, 
and he wraps that chain around his hand and holds the the um, the scythe portion in his in in his hand as nice. he uh, tries to to force the door. Uh, all right, so the door does not open like with as it should normally mm-hmm. uh, because there's no power here. Although you can roll a strength check or um, you know an, an athletics check to try to force open the door. Yeah, Trelax will bear down on the door, forcing it open just with brute force. Um, now let's get that roll. Athletics, you said. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's a 19 on the die uh, for a 35. 35, yeah, you are able to just slide the door open, and it reveals a, a room that's clearly like an airlock into the lab proper. It's empty, save for moth-ridden environmental protection suits. There are only two suits hanging up. It's odd, considering the size of this station. You find mm-hmm. that strange that there's only two suits here. All right, and so, but yeah, you're able to go in. Obviously, you guys are all, those of you that need it, are wearing your environmental protection suits, you know, with your helmets and everything. Um, so the airlock system obviously isn't working, but you can assess that this is what it is, and you can kind of move into the facility. So Okay. What's the lighting situation? Point. It's dark. Okay. It's completely dark, yeah. Completely dark. So, I mean, the the Kyles have dark vision. Mm-hmm. All of you have dark vision. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We we all have gray skin and we all have dark vision. Mm-hmm. I don't have gray well, skin. I have metal. You have gray metal <laughs> <laughs> with a nice copper patina. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Trelax sees what appears to be a, a bombed out and depleted looking room, man. So it's not necessarily bombed out, but it's certainly covered in cobwebs and dust and and looks empty. And you can see that the little airlock hallway opens up into the main reception area, which is this kind of um, hexagon-shaped room. And, you know, you can move in there pretty easily. And it looks like this was once a reception hub. Now only a lifeless android sits at the desk cobwebs and grime coating them in a frozen and eerie greeting a door to the north reads testing chamber a door to the west reads receiving bay and a door to the east reads to labs and domiciles um yeah so that's what you see in here is there's just this android that's sitting at the desk just lifeless and seems to be frozen in in eternity Okay. Um. Trelax will just approach the android with his Kusarigam in his hand raised, and he'll get up to him and, with his free hand, just push the android. And kind of rear back a little bit, it just, just in case. It just falls over, just in a clatter. <clears throat> and it just falls over. Clear. So, is there... A computer anywhere, like a terminal or anything. There like that. is, yeah, there is a terminal. It's it does not have any power. Gotcha. Um, Tenaval would look at the terminal and see that it's pretty dead, and she would look down at the android. And you tell me if this is a no go or not. She would want to cast grave words on the android. Let's give it a shot there. So. You just have to touch them, right? Yeah. There's nothing there. So I got to roll this percentile dice to see if they give you anything useful. Let's see. Okay. Um, So when you touch them, like they're on the ground now, and (laughs) just this voice utters out for them, Welcome to Eclipse Innovation Drift Research Lab. Do you have an appointment? Useless. Useless machine. Um, so, with grave words, you can't actually communicate right. with right. the That's creature? That's just the words that come yeah. out of its mouth. Yeah. That's just what it says. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tenno would just kind of 
she would have crouched by it to touch it. She would stand up and dust off her knees and look over at uh, Trelix and say, Well, it was worth a shot. Let's I press suppose, onward. dear sister, yes, let's press onward. So, we need to make an appointment. <laughs> 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 Doubtful. <laughs> we are already walk-ins, my good man. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. Uh, okay. So you have three exits out of this room. As I said, there's one that's labeled testing chamber. There's one that's labeled receiving bay. And there's one that's labeled two labs and domiciles. Let's check the receiving bay first, maybe. Just to kind of see. Yeah. Does the door, like, automatically open? Or, no, no we've got a... There's no power. Right. But this door... So the so the receiving bay is this way over here to the west. Okay. And uh, this one is a lot, little bit easier to open as it's just a regular door. You know, you can just move it on its track. It mm-hmm. does... You know, I'll just kind of hand wave the roll there. Uh, so you can move into that particular hallway and there's this L hallway that kind of snakes around and connects to another door around the bend. Yeah, Trelix makes his way down the hall and opens the door. Tenna's so we got Trelix and we got Tenaval and we got Gloombot and then I guess Mordrin bringing up the rear. Uh, this door opens into a warehouse that was attached to the lab and this was used to receive supplies and technology for testing. You can see four androids frozen in place in various states of work. Um, Hmm. Two are lifting a box to a shelf. One is seated in a forklift, and the other stands watching this statue of a workday with a clipboard and data pen. Um, I need everybody to roll a... Perception check? Mysticism. Oh, I got you. I don't. Can do. I have mysticism, actually. Uh, it's a 17. Total? Not great. Yeah. <laughs> How about a natural 20 plus 15? Wow. There that is very great. So that's 35. What'd you get, uh, Mordrin? Let's see. That's a 13 on the die plus 18. All right. That's not bad either. 31. But actually, only 10 of all spots that on some of these androids, there is like what looks to be dark tumorous growths on these androids and you recognize this as void boils this is a common hazard in this profession of finding shadow stuff um and so you're going to want to probably you you know that you can try to disable them and send basically send them back to the negative energy plane from which they come or you can just avoid them, though you've got to keep a 40-foot distance. So as soon as she gets that, she would step back and say, Trelix, everybody, step back. It's void boils. Ah, oh, curses. Void boils. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> what does that even mean? What the GM just said. <laughs> Download it straight into your hard straight. drive. Yeah. yeah. How how do you go about trying to get rid of them? Uh, it would be mysticism checks. Okay. Yeah, androids. I mean, see, seeing the uh, the void boils. I mean, I, you said we're all familiar with this, right? Uh, you and um, Tenaval certainly. Right. So. Be, being the resident mystic, like he sees this, and, and Marjorie's like, "Let's let's see if we can get rid of this risk." I mean, even being near these is is a danger to the party. And just straight mysticism checks. Mm-hmm. Androids, fleshy bits. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I I rolled a thirty-two on my mysticism. That's okay, funny. you are able to successfully shunt it back to the negative energy plane. Um, you know that these things have a tendency to 
pop back in after a while. It's almost like playing whack-a-mole. So you have... Whack-a-ball. There's potential for it to pop back up. Right. And, and uh, knowing that, like, Mordrin, for the rest of the time we're here, will be, like, looking out for it, you know, trying mm-hmm. to n- see if he notices any more and then immediately try to banish it back to from whence it came. But also kind of moving with a quickness, right? Because they could come yeah, back. They could come back. Right, what, yeah, yeah. Once you, once you get rid of the void boil, you're able to see that there is a pocket of shadow energy here, uh, which you can harvest with a mysticism check. It can be aided by mysticism or survival. I would like to aid. Okay. I will attempt to aid. I will, with I will aid. I will aid with. Well, it's only two, right? No, anybody can. Th- okay. Isn't it? That's an aid. Okay. It's a thirteen on survival, so. Aid. I mean, uh, auto aid. Your auto aid for. Mr. So that's three aids for Mordrin. So it's going to be a plus six on top of your roll. Okay, so the total, that will be a 42. <laughs> 42. Jesus. You are able to harvest one pocket of shadow stuff here. Um, what does that entail? Like, So, like, you know... We have Ghostbusters backpacks. Basically, you ha- yeah, you have, like... <laughs> I love it. I'm, a, I'm here for it. <laughs> you have these like, these vacuums that suck it up. <laughs> So, yeah. so Morgan's like standing there with his, his void Dyson. backpack and everybody else is like, go on, do it. Go. Yeah. go. Don't cross dreams. the streams. Different spots. Yeah, yeah. Don't cross the streams. Yeah, don't cross the streams. <laughs> yeah, don't cross the streams. Um, you are able to see that there is some loot here. There's 5,000 UPBs in materials Ooh. here. I suck and that a, up in the vacuum too. Mm-hmm. And, and a D-suit 3. That's what I'm um, wearing, I think. But let's move on. Let's keep it rolling. So there is a, another exit up here to the northeast, and it m- marks testing chamber across like a large garage. Okay. Trailax mm-hmm. opens the door. Yeah, uh, so this one's, onward. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult to open because it is a garage. Uh, so I am going to. Trailax just. Bears, I mean, I'm telling you, like, just brutally slams it open. Uh, well, let's get an athletics. To... Yeah, yeah, no. Let's see. Let's just see how brutal you are. Uh, pretty brutal, dude. Um, that is a 30. That's a dirty 30. Dirty 30. <laughs> dirty <laughs> yeah. 30. Even here in the shadow plane. Even here in the it's shadow plane. It's even dirtier uh, yeah, here. Exactly. Yeah. I think in the shadow plane, though, it'd necessarily be dirtier 30s. Yeah. So this opens into a large chamber um, that houses giant rings that run the length of this hall. Cables snake in and out of the shadows to these large rings. Uh, Everybody can roll a perception or an engineering, whichever you're best at. Perception for me. Okay. Yeah, baby. Uh, It's going to be a 32 on perception, my guy. Okay. It's a 14. It is. Natural 2. That's a uh, dirty 30 on perception (laughs) for Mordrin. It's a 31 for perception. All right, so Gloombot, Mordrin, and Teneval all um, know that these rings probably once rotated to generate significant power at one point. Um, Roll a separate engineering check. Or perception. Well, uh, engineer. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, I'm glad that hey, we all spec so roll. hard in the engineering with these characters. I got a 10 in engineering. With uh, a plus I got two. a 23. 23, all right. Uh, DC was 20 there. Um, you were able to see that this was used to test drift engines, which stands out to you because in the shadow plane, drift engines do not work. You don't use shadow planes, or you don't use drift engines in the shadow plane. So, it's you can then assess that this lab did not originate in the shadow plane. That it has been brought here. Which is got to be a little unnerving, but I think for Mordrin, Maybe a little it's bit. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. A little, little vindication He's, of his. He like work he like period. twiddles his fingers, you know, and mm. t- curls his mustache, and and t- 
turns to the party and says, All right, so these obviously used to spin to generate energy that isn't even usable on this plane, but if we wanted to see what they do, what we could do, we could take Mr. Trelax and attach him like a donkey in a mill and spin it around with his great, great muscles. <laughs> you, you run your mouth, but your words make no sense. Uh, and there's only one exit here other than the one you came through and it's the southern exit that probably goes back to the main reception area okay. uh, well, Moonbot yeah. is, uh, is going to open that door and just look through and confirm that it goes to the main reception area yeah there's like a decontamination chamber in between the two um, and that you know that makes sense that there was one kind of between the reception area and the testing area. So that leaves only one unexplored door out of the reception area, and that is to the labs and the domicile portion of this facility. Fantastic. We are going in circles. <laughs> what fun. Uh, right, so is this so door also going to require no, these some are, these are brute easy force? doors, right? Okay. So that opens up into a small hallway that goes to another door. Um, that you're able to open up fairly easily, and that opens up into um, what looks to be a meeting room, like a co large conference room, but now it seems as if many boxes and files have just been stacked haphazardly in the corner of this room. Eclipse hmm. Innovations logo can be seen on all of the boxes. This dreadful corporation. Um, Why? And then hmm. there's like a pair of Double doors, swinging double door, or not swinging, like uh, glass double doors that open into what looks like a galley, which would be the next room over. Um, and so that just seems to be kind of the central dining area for the, the inhabitants that are here. Um, there is a hallway that's up to the north, and like the it's framed by what looks like a checkpoint um, and you can assess that it was probably like a security checkpoint that you know that goes to the labs um, and you can see two patrol class security robots standing there lifeless and blank each guarding one side of the hall the door to the right or to the east uh, you see living quarters marked across the top of of there. Uh, okay, so wait, did you? Say there's no, there's no other exits to worry about but the hallway. There, there's the northern hallway and then there's the, the western, eastern. Or I mean, the eastern door to All the right, living let's, quarters. Let's check the eastern door. Trailax will approach that one. Uh, a modest bunk room continues to speak to the efficiency and simplicity of the living conditions at this lab. There are no foot lockers at the base and no personalized trinkets at any, t at any of the bunks, except for one. You see a small cactus on a tiny table next to one of the bunks. Curious, but useless. <laughs> Let us go. Ten ten Relax is uninterested and we'll just... Head back out. I, I don't. I don't know why he would, but I think Gloombot's going to pocket the cactus, <laughs> probably because it's All not right. prickly to him. And uh, okay. he likes it because it's metal. Yeah. Um, all right. So you you do you can add a small potted cactus <laughs> to your inventory. <laughs> um, <laughs> da, da, da. Sorry, Trelax. You thing. you know. You're leading this charge, it seems, and, and yeah, he's just—he's kind of impatient. He's kind of in a bad mood because because of the ship. He, yeah, he's more thinking like, how the fuck are we gonna get out of here? Um, yeah. So this op this security hall, as I said, you could tell that there was once like some checkpoints that you had to pass through here um, to make through, but these patrol class security robots are just standing there lifeless, and they they don't bother you as you walk right past them, um, and that goes into a large common room and it looks like this was the central relaxation and entertainment suite for those that lived at this lab you see a few couches about and a holovid screen on the western wall 
A double door and another single door exits to the east, both marked laboratories. There is a small bathroom off the hall to the west, and the, you, the first door you saw on your left when you walked through here is marked with Chief Researcher. So you have two labs on the right, then the Chief Researcher's office on the left. I mean, chief researcher, right? Yeah, I think yeah. chief researcher for sure. Yeah, yeah, just do that real quick and then go to the labs. All right, yeah. so Check it. that's this room down here that I'm pinging. Um, so you're able to open that door fairly easily. And you see a neatly organized office. Uh, and again, it is a display of simpleness, of, of simplicity and efficiency. The android that's sitting at the desk is in a sharp suit, though it is now covered in dust. It sits as still as a statue at their desk, eyes forever studying a now powerless data pad, never processing what they see. A small plaque on the desk reads, Research Android Detector 48, with RAD48 in quotations. Uh, so yeah, there is a, a data pad here. Um, but other than that, there's not much else. Um, I'll pick the data to pad up. Trillex yeah. checks it out. Yeah. Um, so you, is there any you, power to it? I mean, no, have... but you could hook it up to a battery if anybody has one. Hook it up to me. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. I'll take a little computers check. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, see, I don't have computers, so one of you guys is going to have to do it to me. I don't have computers. I can try. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Seventeen on the die. All um, right. So, yeah, that that's enough um, okay. to you know you kind of hook it up, plug into Gloombot's one of his Ooh. inputs, <laughs> 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 uh, and it powers up, and you see that there is a password protected home screen. So this would require another computer's check. Okay. <laughs> oh no, that's gonna mm -hmm. be a seven total. What does yeah, it say? Yeah, you're you're not able to bypass the password protection, but you know you can keep the data yeah. pad maybe for later use. Maybe take it back to Uncle Uncle Mal. Yeah, Uncle Mal, Uncle Mally. Uncle Mal. No, <laughs> no, no. <I> agreed. <laughs> uh, so that leaves the labs really at this point. Let's check the nearest lab. Yep. Right across the... Obviously the most enticing. Yeah, Gloombot here. walks across the hall and just slams the door open and steps inside, scans the room. Yeah, boom, slams it open. And you see that this laboratory houses very high-tech and costly equipment. You can see a drift engine suspended from the ceiling in the middle of this room. There are several android technicians scattered about the room, all frozen and covered in dust, lifeless eyes forever staring at their work. And there is a pocket of shadow energy here. So if you want to try another mysticism check to hoover that right up. Can we uh, yes. can I so aid him? Aid. Yep. Yeah, everybody aid me, Morgan. Uh, yeah. Auto. yeah. Uh, that's gonna be an aid as well for Trailax. Get that survival aid there, D. Do you aid Josh? I don't have mysticism, so no. no survival. survival. Oh, survival. You said mysticism. I know, but this is the same thing. Nine. So no, Nine, not aid. no aid. No aid. So that's two aids. That's a plus four, Heath, for Mordrin. Okay. 39. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Another bit of shadow energy sucked up. Okay. Um, okay. So that leaves the final lab. And, you know, you guys can move around there, right? Can Tina, well, like, is almost running to that because she like she's starting to get really anxious like we haven't found what we're looking Anything, for yet really. yeah. Yeah. yeah why are you running? i mean ex except all this dope fuel that was our uh, part of our mission that's secondary that's not her mission why are you yeah. can i can the i the shadow stuff is not going anywhere <sighs> come along boys let's get this over with you did not answer my question she would just nod at uh, Trailix. To kick the door open. Open it. <laughs> he kicks the door open. Boom. Kick the door open. 
Can I can I detect magic before we leave the first lab? Uh, sure. There is no magic in the first lab. <laughs> okay. <Nice. laughs> I, I just want to detect magic in both of the labs, you know? Uh, yeah, so you open the door to this other lab, and this is like the general labs, it seems. This room is divided into a few smaller cubicles, each housing smaller workspaces. Yet, where all of the other spaces you have explored in this area have been lifeless, scenes frozen in time as if all power were lost in an instant, you hear a small hum in the northwest corner of this room, and can see a faint, dark purple glow emanating from the same workspace. Trailax like gets in like sort of a ready position because he's got a weird feeling about this. This is unusual. Something something going on in here. I mean, can I detect magic on the purple? You glow? certainly can, um, and you do detect significant amounts of magic emanating from the corner of this room. Um, is this it? Is this it? I, I can't be sure, but it very well may be. More shadow <laughs> stuff. Uh, no, but out of the shadows, an android steps into your view with red eyes, white skin, and says to you, Who are you? Why are you here? Who are you, and why are you here? <laughs> Gloombot <laughs> ponders on the question for a moment. Oh, God. Does not compute. <laughs> why are you Answers State here? your designation. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Talk now, android, before I strangle you. Tina would hold up her hand and step forward towards the android. Uh, and she would say... I am Tenafor Adar. I'm here to find you, I think. What is your name, friend? Well, you've come a long way. You see, this is my lab. Now, why were you looking for me? I wasn't. <laughs> she would just like look over her shoulder and just glare daggers at at Gloombot. Gloombot and glooms then, at you. <laughs> she would turn back and she would kind of shake her head a little bit and sit and look at um Mordrens. I don't exactly know why we are looking for you, but I know that you are important. We have... We have to learn something from you. We have to... You are important. What? What is your name, friend? And she would just kind of step forward, and she's just, like, shaking. Careful, Tina. My name is Xenophanes Six, and... If you made your way here, that implies that you have a ship. <laughs> Had well. funny thing about that. <laughs> uh, roll a perception check, everybody, except for Tina and Aww. Zeno, because you guys are like, you know, in convo. Twenty-nine. Twenty-one. Thirty-three. Okay, uh, Mordrin, you are certainly overcome with excitement because this, whatever it is, you know that this is it. But it's not. It's not just this android. You know that there's there's something. Whatever magic you're detecting, that that item is crucial to whatever it is that you need to do. This is the item that's that's glowing purple. You need. But you hear something from within the lab moving. Uh, yeah, I mean... Well, not I, from within the lab, but the, from the facility, like back where you, you came. Right. And I, I turned to Xenophanes 6 and say, This girl is... 
there's something special going on with her. She's having dreams. I'm a prophet. I interpret dreams. And her dreams have led us here to you. But let's put a pin in this because I can hear something from back in the facility. What? Trelax will like look over his shoulder and peep back out, you know, sort of um, into the previous room on alert. Mm hmm. There's nothing uh, in this room. Hearing talk of dreams, uh, Gloombot's going to walk up. Xenophanes 6. Do you dream of electric sheep? Because I do Ele not. Electric sheep? No. But I do dream. I mm. couldn't have dreamt of this encounter, however. You hear faintly. Everybody hears this. Come out. Come out wherever you are. I can sense great sadness and emotion. I have something to show you. Come out. Come play. Oh, I will play with you. And Trey likes to start marching down the hall by himself like Kusari Gama in a hand. He just wants to fuck something up and just like release some of his frustration. Gloombot yeah, turns heel and goes immediately out the door and starts to follow him. Yeah. Mor uh, Mor Morgan turns to Xenophanes. He says, you said this was your lab, correct? Yes. What the fuck is that? You mean you couldn't have foreseen it, Prophet? <laughs> uh, well, dream prophets, we really kind of work on vagaries. We'll, we'll get into it later. <laughs> <laughs> That's like your line. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, you guys maybe get in marching order, right? Whoever it is, they are not welcome. And just, like, pulses magic into his arm and just crackling with energy. Yeah, and, and Mordrin pulls out his uh, plasma fork. It's a 15-notch plasma fork. It's like a Jesus. big fuck. Two-pronged gun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you guys make your way through the security checkpoint and back into the galley, and you still don't see anything, but you just hear this sing-songy voice taunting you. Um, and, you know, you peek into the living quarters, and there's nothing there, and you make your way into the meeting room and nothing there uh, which as you march into the main reception area Tra Trelax you're the first to see that there is this pale white creature with long pointy ears that stick out at the side and he has white glassy eyes and he has big blackish purple lips and his teeth are like fanged and he's, whole, he's wearing like a black robes with a high black collar. And next to him is a small hover drone um, that has like a little output display. <laughs> it's like an 8-bit face with a frowny face on it. <laughs> That's um, adorable. Hovering, hovering next to him. And in his left hand is the head of Unky Mally. <gasps> and we'll see you in a few minutes. Ooh. What? What? Uh, fuck? Uh, uh, still Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he fixed our ship first. 